Thank you very much. First up, a question. Are you friendly? Yes. That's good to hear. Let's just do a poll here. I noticed when I, just, uh, when I was sitting down here, a guy stepped in with this bright yellow shirt. It's a fall day, it's raining outside, so we're all kind of gloomy. You step in, you have this yellow shirt on, and you just light up the, the room. How many have complimented you on your shirt? How many in here have complimented this fellow on his, on his, red, his yellow uh, sweatshirt? Let's just do a raise of hands. We have one up there, that's great, I like that. Yeah, good, good, <clears throat> excellent. But you could say there's perhaps room for, for improvement. And you, and you would think, here we are, we're in Copenhagen. Copenhagen's the capital of Denmark. Denmark is home to the happiest people on earth. You'd think that because we're so happy, we'd also be the friendliest on earth. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, we're not. <clears throat> My name is Lars A.P. I'm founder of the Flink Movement, and I'm also the son of an American father and a Danish mother. When I was six years old, we moved to Denmark, to Hårbyfyn, um, the natural place to move to. And um, <laughs> growing up there, we would speak Danish and English, Danish and English, back and forth over the kitchen table, which is actually quite normal in a dual language family. So there's nothing odd about that. But the odd thing about it is, whenever we switch languages, I also noticed that I would switch personalities. So when I speak Danish, I'm slightly more shy, I'm a little more withdrawn, and I can actually socially be slightly awkward in some situations. Whereas when I speak English, I'm more open, I'm more curious towards other people, and I reach out towards other people a whole lot more. And this brings everyday adventures quite a lot, actually. Now, the really interesting thing is, when I speak English, I'm also happier than when I speak Danish. <laughs> I know, it's, it's kind of thought-provoking. Um, now, and this actually did, uh, was quite a, an interesting thought for me, because just five years ago, English social scientists came out with a world map of happiness. And now, we Danes are really good at, uh, at curling, the fine sport of curling. Uh, <laughs> we're also really good at handball. We are actually really good at that. But when it comes to happiness, we're in a league of our own. We are the happiest people on earth, and we've actually been so pretty many years. So we are really, really good. We came out number one on this, uh, this world map. And that, that uh, was, was a little bit of a question mark formed within myself, because how can this be? I mean, if, uh, if you cut me in two just for a moment, just figuratively anyway, um, here I am, half of me is English speaking, and the other half speaks the language that the happiest people on earth speak. Now, just as a basic assumption, you'd think I'm happier when I speak this language, which is the happiest language on earth, right? Well, it turns out it's just, the op it's just the opposite, as I told you. I'm actually happier when I speak English. And so, how can this be? And I, I'm not smart enough to, to be able to answer that. So I had to go out and, and consult people who are far, far smarter than myself. And I spoke to psychologists, sociologists, anthropologists, even meteorologists, and also, I also uh, consulted tax experts just to see what is it in Danish society, what is it in Danish culture, which makes it more difficult for me, for Danish-speaking Lars, to reach these levels of happiness, which English-speaking Lars apparently can do with relative ease. And this is a complex question, I know that. And so I, didn't really, I, I really thought, okay, it's going to be difficult for me to get questions from these uh, experts. It turned out, actually, it was not difficult at all. They could all give me very succinct answers to this relatively complex question. And it all basically, if you take it all together, it all boils down to one thing, and that is, it's way easier for me to be friendly when I speak English as compared to when I speak Danish. And of course, I wanted to change this, because I live here in this wonderful country, in this wonderful city, and I wanted to be able to be as friendly as I can be when I speak English. So I had to do something. And so I wrote a book. And here's the book, it's called and I know it's a, it's a terrible name in, in English, so I do excuse that, uh, but it's just to underline the point, because it's an important point that I, that I wanted to make. But I also very, uh, I, I realized that, well, a book isn't gonna do it. And now, I'm not, I'm not here to advocate friendliness in the how are you or how's it going sense. Uh, I, I mean genuine friendliness. I mean that you really care for the people around you, that you really feel empathy for people around you. 
So that could also be that you say, how are you? How are you doing? How's it going? But it, 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 has, to have, it has to be genuinely felt, and that, that, that's sincerely my, uh, my point. But it became very clear to me that what, a book is not going to do it. Um, so I decided, well, I've got, to, I've got to get people along, I've got to create a movement. And so in order to create a movement, you've got to move yourself. So I moved away from the desk, and I moved out into the streets, and I guess you could say I also tried to, uh, to move in mysterious ways so as to get other people to come along. And I've done several different things. Um, one of them, I, uh, I decked myself out as a, um, here I am in a, in a sec, as a uh, parking attendant. And um, <laughs> instead of giving out tickets, I gave out prizes for people who had done a great parking. So I gave prizes for <laughs> great parallel parking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you don't believe how much authority you have when you have a uniform on like that. It's amazing. <laughs> So I, so I gave for a great parallel parking, for nice rims on a car, uh, for a great car wash. Uh, and people were, it was, they, they expected to get a ticket, but then they, were, they, had, they got a prize instead. That was, it, was a, it was a wonderful experience. And, and you know uh, the quaint suburban street, which can sometimes also get slightly desolate, and where you really don't get to see the neighbors or the people on the street as much as you'd really like to? Well, I live on a street like that. And um, one morning, about a month ago, my kids and I, as we were leaving, I was taking them to school, and I was going, back, I was going to work. We stopped just before we left, and on the asphalt outside the, the, the house, we wrote, Friday bar, 5 o'clock, will you come? With big letters. And to our amazement, people actually came. And here's a, a picture of, uh, of the party, or the, the Friday bar that we had. Um, <laughs> that's uh, in the middle uh, is Astrid, my daughter. She's nine years old. <clears throat> And uh, thank you. <clears throat> she's serving up chips, and she's having quite a few herself also, uh, which is, I guess, one of the perks of trying to be friendly, that you can also have some chips while you're doing it. Uh, the great thing about this uh, Friday bar was the people who, who came were not my immediate neighbors. They weren't actually people that I know very well. Actually, there were quite a few people that I didn't know. They live on my street, but they were newcomers to the street, or they just lived on the, on the other side of the street, so I hadn't really talked to them that much. And so this was really, I and mean, it was drizzling this day, this Friday afternoon. It was like, there was a little bit of rain. So it was, it's Denmark, after all. Um, but so, so here we were in, in a slight drizzle, and we were getting to know each other. We were bonding in the neighborhood. And so I think this was a, a great way of, of nudging the neighborhood towards more friendliness. And it was a great experience. We're definitely going to do it again. Another thing that I'm, I'm very consumed by is, when we talk about friendliness, we talk about a lot about first impressions, so the, the impression you make when you just meet people, and that's really, really important, obviously. But another thing that I think is also very important is last impressions. And you must all know of the Roskilde Music Festival, which is held every, every summer in Roskilde. Um, my cohorts and I from the Flink movement, we decided we wanted to do something at the Roskilde Festival. And when you've been at the Roskilde Festival listening to music for five days, you've been drinking quite a bit, you've been up late, and it's often very dirty because you're sleeping in tents and around mud. So when you're about to leave from the Roskilde Festival, you're tired, you're dirty, you're hungry, you just want to go home. That's sort of a bad last impression, you could say. Can we lift that last impression? And that's what we tried to do um, with, uh, w w with the cohorts in the, in the Flink movement. We gathered together, all of us, and we, and we uh, took some Danish rye bread and made smørbrød. And uh, we packed it up as lunch packs. And then we stood down at, this is a frame grab from the film, we stood at Roskilde train station, and we handed out free lunch packs. And it's amazing how much uh, joy a lunch pack like that can bring when you're tired, dirty, and hungry, and, and just on your way home. So the joy was just immense on the train station. And it goes to show that even a small lunch can really mean a bunch when you're in a situation like that. <laughs> and, and you could ask, so what is it we're trying to do? Well, what, what we're trying to do is essentially we're trying to show positive signs of a better world. That's essentially what we're, to, what we're trying to do, where we connect more and where we do more with each other. Signs that could, in a sense, look something like this. Take a look. <laughs> this is from a lake just outside of Vancouver in Canada, and I love things like this, because a sign like that, a sign which is so generous, and it puts a smile on my face, of course I want to be generous back at it. And this hammers down my point, which is flink breeds more flink, or generosity breeds more generosity. And so stuff like that I, I, I absolutely love, and I, and I want more of that. But cynics could 
could say, and, 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 it's, and it's quite all right, you could say, well, what's in it for me? I mean, what, what do I get out of it? Where's the return on, of investment for me here? And, and to that, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go to a, to a different scene. Let's go to a, a bus in, a, in, a, in an urban space. So we're in a city bus, so the bus is crammed full, there's no seats left, and an old man steps onto the bus. He's got, he's got tired legs, and he, and, he, and he comes in, nowhere to sit. Well, fortunately, a young woman rises from her seat and says, why don't, you take a, why don't you take my seat? And cynics would say, well, there you go. She's friendly and she loses her seat. So, so you know, I mean, that's, it's a bad decision. <laughs> the thing is, scientists took a, you know, looked at this and, and they actually found that, sure, the, the old man who has tired legs, when he gets the seat, of course he's happier. He actually experiences what's called elevation, what scientists call elevation, which is essentially that the, the level of your happiness rises. Now, the interesting thing is the woman who gets up from her seat and who now has to stand, she actually experiences exactly the same level of elevation as the old man does. So although she has no seat left, she's now standing, she's actually happier than when she was sitting down. Now, the really, really, really interesting thing here is that the people on the bus who see the young woman rising for the old man, they experience the same level of elevation as the old man and the young woman do. So this is really a case of karma not only being squared, but karma to the third. And I think this has immense powers, and I think this is really something that we should move further into and, and really exploit much, much more. And what we have to remember is prognosis tell us that we're going to be rubbing shoulders a whole lot more. Globally, we will be building, in the next 40 years, we'll be building so much urban space that we've built within the last 4,000 years. So we're going to be standing a whole lot closer in this bus. Those seats are going to be a whole lot more full, and there's going to be buses like that all over the world and many more of them. So we really need to do something. And that's what we're trying to do in, in uh, the Flink movement. We have a, a utopia, which is a utopia, I know that. And the utopia is, what would happen if we, us Danes, the happiest people on earth, what would happen if we started to spread that personal surplus that we have individually and shared it more with each other? What would happen if we, the happiest people on earth, also became the friendliest people on earth? I think that could be absolutely stunning. I think it would be a, a great goal to work towards. And I know it's utopian. And I know that cynics will also say it's never going to happen in Denmark. Uh, how could we? The weather. That's one thing. <laughs> Number two, Scandinavians, we tend to be slightly cool. Socially, we don't, uh, we, we don't uh, connect that much. We're never going to make it here. And, and you might be right. My take on it is, if we can make it here, we can make it anywhere. <laughs> so, thank you. <clears throat> And we could, we, could, we could take it out into the world. And actually, they're already doing it out there in the world, but still, we can, we can go out there. Like in, in, in Japan, there's a, there's a cafe in Japan. It's called Ogori Cafe. They have a wonderful way of playing with the face that we normally hold up in, in public spaces. So what they do at Ogori uh, Cafe, the, the, the principle is, is really weird. Uh, I go in, I order a glass of orange juice. Instead of getting the orange juice, I get the cafe latte, which you ordered, because you're standing in line in front of me. And so instead of you getting the cafe latte, you get the chicken sandwich, which you ordered, because you're standing in line in front of Selena. And so this is really weird. Oh, what's, what's, what's going on here? And, and of course, <laughs> you might not want to go to this cafe every single day. <laughs> but the interesting thing is, this Ogori Cafe, it actually affords us new possibilities. Because when I'm about to sip the cafe latte, which is, a, which is actually your cafe latte, I feel compelled to say cheers to you, because it's your cafe latte, and oh, it's actually really good. <laughs> and so, by doing that, we're, form, we're forming a bond. We're getting to know each other already now, and we really didn't know each other before because we were just standing in line together. And I think this is a wonderful way of pl being playful with the way that we are in public spaces and the way that we interact. So I'd love stuff to, like that to happen. I'd love much more of like that to happen. The Flink movement is uh, experiencing right now quite a boom. Uh, we're the largest, or we're the fastest growing group on Facebook in, in Denmark right now. Um, we're working together with municipalities, we're working on the streets, we're actually working with the government as well, and we're, we're, uh, we're trying to crank up the social thermometer of Danes so that we can be more for each other and just get more out of these social interactions with each other. And we're having a great time doing it, it's, it's a lot of fun doing this, and, and it's also very meaningful. And I urge you guys, why don't we help me out here? Let's try to make this TED the friendliest TED we've ever seen. And I think we can do it. Yeah, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I, I know we can do it. Yeah.
because you guys are so friendly. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, we'll, 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 we'll bring it home. So uh, today, um, when, when you get that coffee from the barista, compliment him or her. Oh, wow, that's great foam that you're making there. <laughs> or when you've seen the cameraman standing with the camera for way too long, bring him a sandwich. Hey, come on, uh, hold on. Let, let, take the sandwich. You must be hungry by now. Let's be, let's be friendly towards each other. Because what it's all about, I mean, in a world of cold shoulders, sometimes all you need is a pat on the back. And sometimes you just don't know, well, who should I pat on the back and where should I pat him or her? And that can actually be a little difficult. Well, we've actually worked on that. And we're, we've, uh, we've designed a T-shirt where there's a, 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 should be an image of it up there, where we've actually, <laughs> here's where you can place your hand. And so I'm not asking you to, to take the shirt off your back and give it to your fellow human being to be so friendly. I mean, that's a little too much. But I'm willing to do it just to prove a point, because this, I, this really means a lot to me. So I have this shirt on, which is our, our, our pat on the back shirt. I'm going to throw it out to you. Whoever catches it, please pass it forward to someone who you think deserves a pat on the back. Here we go. Ready? There we go. Thank you very much.